So I always try and take some some class, something that I don't know, or um, I really love make it and take it things. So I always try and do one of those too. So I don't know how many years I've um, gone to CHT, but it's like nine or ten CHT. Um, yeah, I'm actually an industrial designer. I'm not a textile um, or fibers person per se, but I'm also interested in uh, adaptive reuse of materials. So that's one of the reasons I got into weaving is just to try to mix things up a little bit. And so this um, entire conference, the fact that it's about you know uh, technology and also traditional techniques, I think it's just been a, a, a nice melding of the two. Um, you know, schools of thought, you know, both the, the tech end of things and the traditional, natural world and how much that is important to all of us. So that's pretty much <laughs> what I come leaving, you know, from this place. So. so I started getting interested in weaving because my mom was interested in weaving and she joined the Austin Guild and she took me to a lot of the meetings and I started paying more and more attention and so I've learned a lot from just being at the meetings and learning from all the members who have so much knowledge to offer and so I'm just now starting to actually do weaving hands-on and this uh, this convention has really helped me because it gives me an opportunity to learn directly from people instead of just from observation, so some actual hands-on experience weaving and meeting people in the weaving world. Well, actually, I'm a novice when it comes to the world of weaving and looming and all of these other art forms that we're seeing here at the Contemporary Hand Weavers of Texas Conference. Actually, what piqued my curiosity of, that made me even come to this event was the keynote speaker last night. It was amazing just to see the convergence of fabrics and textiles and technology, just the electronics and just the way in which that whole industry is moving. Another aspect of, well, this event today on Saturday is the fact that I'll be able to touch and just play with things I've never touched or played with before. This is a totally new realm that I've been invited to participate in, so thanks Meg. And hopefully I'll be able to get some supervision and play with that big loom over there that's been calling out my name ever since I walked in. So I thank the coordinators of this particular conference and I'm interested and excited to learn even more. established in 1955 and in thinking about how we could celebrate we decided something that was very important in the 1950s were aprons in everyday life. Why not weave something that we all cherish the memories of of seeing our grandmothers and our mothers wearing. So we chose to weave 60 aprons and display them. We didn't care if they were to the waist, they had bibs, they looked like 50s or modern, uh, children's aprons, men's aprons, and even a nice display of some historical aprons that belonged to members and they were woven by other family members. I don't know what 
really brought you in, but I have always been interested in the touch and the feel and the movement of textiles. Mm -hmm. And what brought me in probably was Navajo weaving, and then I found out I didn't want to do that. <laughs> and so we went a different direction. That's true. Well, I've always been into textiles, and I also love computers and photography and it just sort of all came together and then we learned how to dye from Tracy oh, cool. Kastner and we were sort of partners in crime with that. Oh, absolutely. And then we found silk and dyeing and computers and... And I think the other part of it, since I have a minor in English and a minor in mathematics, it really brings both of those disciplines into an art form that is so much fun to do. So I get to satisfy both sides of my brain in that way. Yeah, I guess you could say that with the computers and the textiles for me as well. So that's it. We love it. When I was 15, my Girl Scout leader, Martha Morse in Houston, who turned out to be, later I found out, one of the premier weaving teachers in Houston, uh, was allowed the Girl Scouts to use her loom and I wove material for a skirt. I still have that skirt and the extra material. I swore then someday I had to have a loom of my own. It took me 40 years but now I have probably six, eight or so looms and weaving is my passion.